Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to discuss some sample questions that can help you pass the AWS Certified AI Practitioner exam. If you're new to this channel, my name is Rahul Trussel and I passed this certification on August 27, 2024. Please note that these questions are part of my new Udemy course on AWS Certified AI Practitioner exam. And if you're looking for something more hands-on, then you can take a look at my Amazon Bedrock hands-on course. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the first question. So the question says, a startup uses LLM to summarize long articles. Which metrics can be used to evaluate the quality of summarization by comparing overlap of unigrams between the generated summary and a reference summary? So how I would approach this question in an exam is by looking at some of the keywords so if we see the keywords in this question so the first one is it uses an llm to summarize long articles then it talks about evaluating the quality of summarization and then comparing overlap of unigram so those are the three key concepts within this question so now if i look at the first option which is the bird score so it is true that bird score is used for any text based evaluation such as summarization, translation and so on. So it meets these two criteria. But BERT score uses semantic and contextual understanding to evaluate the generated and reference summary. So it will use a pre-trained BERT embeddings to calculate the cosine similarity between generated summary and reference summary. But in this question, it's talking about overlap of unigrams, which means that it is going to do a word to word match. And that is what BERT score does not do. So that means this is the wrong option. Now let's take a look at the second option. And that is blue score. And the blue score is used for evaluating the language translation, not for summarization articles. So this option is wrong. But just so that you understand what blue score means. So blue score, as I said, is used for language translation. And if you want to calculate the blue score, you will use the value of precision and brevity penalty. So the third one is ML model evaluator. So there is no such matrix. I just used it as a distractor. And then finally, we have the root score. So root score is used for evaluating the quality of the summarization. So it meets these two criteria and it also does the comparison by matching word to word. It, it can be a unigram, maybe it matches one to one words or it can be bigram, matches two words at a time and so on. So root score is the correct answer to this question. And what you should also know about root score is that you will calculate the precision, recall, F1 score while doing the evaluation. So from the exam perspective, you should know the difference between these three metrics, BERT, BLUE and root score. Okay, now let's take a look at the second question. And it says a bank is looking to disperse loans to customers after application is approved by the ML model. However, the bank wants to ensure that the loan dispersal mechanism detects model biases and can explain the decisions such as which factors contributed most to loan approval or rejection, which AWS service will be a good fit in this scenario. So now let's take a look at some of the keywords. So application is approved by the machine learning model. Then it talks about detecting model biases and it should be able to explain the decisions. So those are the three key concepts within this question. Now let's take a look at the answers. So the first one is Amazon SageMaker Data Wrangler. So Amazon SageMaker Data Wrangler is mainly used for data pre-processing. So you ingest the data from different data sources, then you cleanse the data, transform the data, and then export the data to maybe a SageMaker feature store, which can be used then for training the model. So this is not correct option. 
Now let's take a look at the second one. The second one is Amazon SageMaker Model Monitor. And Amazon SageMaker Model Monitor is used to monitor the machine learning models in production environment. It will monitor the data quality. It will monitor the model performance. So it cannot detect bias or explain the decisions. So this option is also not correct. So third one is Amazon SageMaker Feature Store. So it is used for storing features that maybe have been exported from Data Wrangler. And then there could be different teams within an organization that are trying to build a model, but need similar data to train the model or for inferencing. So that's what SageMaker Feature Store is used for. And it cannot detect model bias or explain the decision. And then finally, we have the Amazon SageMaker Clarify, and which is the correct answer in this scenario. So Amazon SageMaker does three key things. It detects the model bias. Second, it can be used to evaluate the large language models. And third, it can explain the decisions of the model by highlighting which were the most important features that led to a particular decision. Okay, so now let's take a look at the third question. So the third question says a bank is looking to reduce load on its call center by building a banking agent, a multi-step orchestrator that can seamlessly connect to the organization data sources such as DynamoDB, RDS, as well as rag based systems. Additionally, the agent should be able to demonstrate chain of thought reasoning if required for traceability. So now let's look at the keywords for this question. So we have a multi-step orchestrator, then it's talking about connecting to organization data sources, say DynamoDB, RDS, as well as RAG based systems, such as maybe Amazon Bedrock knowledge bases. So agents should also be able to demonstrate chain of thought reasoning if required. Okay, now let's take a look at the options. The first one is Amazon Bedrock knowledge bases. And Amazon Bedrock knowledge bases is a managed AWS services for building RAG based applications. So based on the question, it is not the correct answer. Now let's take a look at the second one. Pinecone agents. Okay, so again, this is a distractor. There is nothing like Pinecone agents. Pinecone is a vector DB that is one of the options that you will get when you are building Amazon Bedrock knowledge bases. So you can choose either open search or Pinecone vector DB and so on. So it's not an AWS service, it's a AWS partner service and it's only used in Amazon Bedrock knowledge bases. Third one is Amazon Bedrock Cloud. So again, this is incorrect option. Amazon Bedrock is a serverless service from AWS, which allows you to access large language models. And Cloud from Anthropic is one of the large language models that you can access through the Amazon Bedrock service but it does not meet the criteria that has been defined in this question. So finally, we have the Amazon Bedrock agents and which is the correct option for this question. So Amazon Bedrock agent is basically a multi-step orchestrator. So it can execute multiple steps based on the user question and it is powered by a large language model. Then it can connect to organization data sources such as DynamoDB, RDS, and it can also connect to RAG based systems such as Amazon Bedrock knowledge bases. And finally, it can demonstrate chain of thought reasoning. And that is very important from the explainability perspective. Now let's take a look at the fourth question. A large insurance firm is looking to build a generative AI HR Q&A app. As per the HR team requirements, the employee can pose a question and get a response to their queries related to leave policy, bonus, etc. Most of this data is stored in the internal organization data source, which managed AWS service can be used to build rag based application with least effort from application team. So now let's take a look at the keywords. So it's talking about building a generative AI HR q &A app. Then it's talking about the most of the data is stored in internal organization data store. Then it says it wants to use managed AWS service. And finally, how it can be built with the least effort from the application team. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look at the options. So the first one is Amazon Bedrock Cloud Foundation model. So we discussed it's an cloud is an LLM that can be used as part of Amazon Bedrock service. And here it's talking about connecting to an internal organization data store. Here it's talking about a managed AWS service which will connect to an internal organization data store. So this is not the right service because it's just a large language model. Next we have Amazon Party Rock and Amazon Party Rock is just a playground provided by AWS where the business teams or even IT developers can go to this site and try out various large language models with drag and drop. You don't need any credit card details, AWS account. You can just try out the various large language models through drag and drop. So this is not the right answer. It doesn't allow you to connect with any internal organization data source. So this is an incorrect option. Then we have Amazon Bedrock Agents. And we just discussed about Amazon Bedrock Agents. It is a multi-step orchestrator. So this is not the right option. Then finally you have the Amazon Bedrock Knowledge Bases, which is the correct option for this question. So Amazon Bedrock Knowledge Bases is a managed AWS services. Okay, now let's take a look at the next question. A startup is looking to offer services to its consumers where they will summarize books of a few hundred pages. They intend to use LLM for summarization tasks. What is one of the key features they should consider while selecting the large language model, considering the large size of the document? So let's take a look at the keywords. So the keywords we have here is, so it is going to use the LLM for summarization task. Then it wants to evaluate, which is the key feature that it should consider while selecting the large language model as the document size is large. So now let's take a look at the options. So the first one is consider an LLM with maximum number of parameters. So LLM, when we talk about LLM parameters, it shows the number of weights and connections between different neurons that have been used to build a large language model parameter focuses more on complexity of the large language model so it's not relevant for this scenario now let's look at the second option consider an llm with low inference latency so latency is definitely a challenge with large language models but it is more relevant when we are building something like chatbot where your end customer poses a question and then it is waiting for a response so if the latency is more then the user has to wait much longer to get a response and that sometimes can lead to poor experience so for the requirement of this question where we're talking about summarization of a large size document this parameter or feature of the large language model is not relevant Okay, so then we have the consider an LLM with lowest temperature top K and top P. So we know that temperature top K, top P are used to influence the inference parameters for a large language model. They help in controlling the randomness and diversity of responses. So it doesn't have to do anything with the size of the document that we are trying to summarize. So this is an incorrect option as well. Then finally, we have considered an LLM with maximum context window to better summarize such a large document. So context window determines what is the maximum number of words or tokens that can be provided as a prompt or input to the large language in a single request. So that's the most important factor that you will need to consider. Okay, that's pretty much it from this lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.